Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alison, the online piano and the online violin tutor. So this is part two of learning to play the violin as an adult and this is about physical limitations. But before we get into this video, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel and comment underneath the video as it does help with the YouTube algorithms to help get my YouTube channel out there a little bit more. I'd also just quickly like to make everyone aware that I have a Patreon page and for just $5 a month, you'll gain access to my complete back catalogue of almost a thousand pieces of violin sheet music, which are added to on a weekly basis, as well as MP3 backing tracks for the violin, violin performance covers, and some easy easy piano music as well that cover literally every genre from Chopin to Adele and everything in between. If you are interested, further details on my Patreon page can be found in the link just under here and I will also put a link underneath this video and in the comments as well. So the violin does require a lot of physical dexterity and coordination which can be challenging for some adults. Um, especially for those of you that do have kind of physical limitations due to injuries, arthritis, um, I don't know, any other kind of health sort of issues. Don't forget to consult your doctor beforehand if you are worried that playing the violin is going to cause you any harm or anything. Obviously just use your common sense on that one. So if you do have any physical issues that you think might, might prevent you or might cause you a bit of pain or might cause you a bit of extra, you know, injury or anything like that consult your doctor make sure you've got the all make sure you've got the all all clear but for those of you who do have physical limitations assuming that obviously you've all been signed off and you're okay to uh, you know to to learn the violin the only thing that really you can do is just to take your time and just go slow with it as well so i think when we are when we're children it's very easy because children, you know, the children are just very flexible. They just don't really have any problems and things. And then when you get older, things start going south, things start dropping off and things just generally start breaking as you get older. And it's, you know, it's, it's soul destroying, isn't it? But it's just a fact of just, it's just a fact of life and just getting older. But you don't want to let things like that stop you playing the violin. If you really want to play the violin, you can really play the violin. And there are a few things that you can do to help you. There are a few exercises and things that you can do. No different to an athlete, um, I don't know, uh, running a racetrack or, you know, whatever it is an athlete is doing, javelin, tennis, anything like that. They're not just going to kind of get out of bed, boom, straight into the, the playing field and off, off they go. They're going to be warming up, you know, they're going to be doing their limbering. So if obviously if you are, I'm, I'm, you know, if, if your uh, physician or your doctor has signed off on this and everything is OK, obviously, do some, do, you know, do, do a little bit of, do a little bit of warming up. Just make sure that your, you know, your, your arms are just uh, flexible and everything. And, you know, you, you're going to be holding the violin for a long period of time as well. So when you are sitting there and you are holding the violin up like this, it is quite an effort with this part of the arm here. You'll probably find this part of the arm aching a little bit. That's fine. That's normal. That's not anything to worry about. It's things like shooting pains that we don't want. If we've got any shooting pains, then we need to stop what we're doing and consult doctors and things like that. But you know, a, a bit of a bit of aching, just you know, muscle aching because you've just held your arm up. I mean, if I held my arm up like this for the entire of this video, my arm's gonna, my shoulder's gonna start getting tired and my arm's gonna start getting lower and lower. But that's because I'm holding my arm up and the effort of doing so, you know, is is hurting my arm. And I am gonna put my arm down because it's getting uncomfortable and I can't hold it up dur for the duration of the video. So. You know, make sure you do a few little warm ups and everything and make sure you are, you know, physically limber and all that kind of thing. Just take your time, go slow and just take breaks with it. So a student of mine um, had some neck issues at one point and she didn't really know what it was. And, you know, we were trying to get to the bottom of it and everything. But when we were having the lessons, we just had to make sure that we just weren't playing too much violin for a long period of time because I think she was she was clamping the act of sort of, you know, gripping the violin with uh, with with her jaw and her chin and her neck the shoulder coming up a little bit was just causing a little bit of pain i think it's a problem we found out it was a problem with the the spine and slip discs and all that kind of thing but suffice to say she was okay playing for short periods of time she just couldn't play for longer periods of time before the the, the, the pain kind of set in so you know she's a little bit past that that now and, and things have started to get better and now she's got back into the violin again 
you know, but I think the pain's always going to be there. So for her, she just takes it. She she knows who she is. Um, she'll probably make a comment underneath this video. If she does, she might have something insightful to say for you. So I'll, I'll pin her comment on the top. You know who I'm talking about. So yeah, just just take it really slow. If you've got anything like that and you're okay to play, just take things just just take things really slowly and just do a little bit a uh, little bit at a time. Try not to you know you, you, try not to do five minutes of playing and then that's it for the day. That's not ideal if you can help. You should be able to go for longer than five minutes, but even if it's five minutes, potter around, come back, five minutes, potter around, come back, five minutes. So uh, cumulatively, you're doing a good sort of 20 to 30 minutes of, of playing. Yes, it's going to take you a little bit longer, but you know, you, you can still get there. So my point of this is that, and I do get a lot of people that say to me they've got wrist problems, they've got neck problems, they've got back problems, they've got this, that and the other, w whatever the ailments are, can I still play the violin? And the point is, yes, absolutely, you can play the violin. Again, as long as you are signed off by your, your healthcare provider, doctor, whatever it is, assuming that everything is, is okay there, then just take things in more bite-sized uh, portions, rather than playing in 30 minute chunks because you're probably just going to get fatigued a lot quicker than everybody else is. The other thing you can probably help yourself with because the violin is a slightly awkward instrument because we're standing like that the whole time what you want to just make sure especially for for you if this is you know if, if you are having more uh, health issues and things like that is to make sure that your posture is correct a hundred percent of of the time it's not really so much of an issue for a healthy person that doesn't have sort of you know any, any back problems neck problems or anything like that because it would take a long time um to, to, to notice any of that but especially for someone that does have back neck shoulder whatever it is issues you're going to make sure you're going to want to make sure that your posture is perfect so we don't want the violin out to the front. We don't want to be hunching over. We don't want to be doing all of this business because as soon as we start doing all of this, you know, already we've got weakened neck muscles and, uh, you know, whatever it is that we've got going on. And we're exasperating that by, by closing in and, and doing the most terrible posture for the violin. So we want to be making sure that we are holding the violin out to the side where it should be. We don't want to make sure it's up here. We don't want to be, we don't want it to be down there. We want to make sure it's it's flat, horizontal, like a table, not too far out to the front, not too far out to the side. I've got plenty of posture videos on my channel. I will link them directly underneath. And then we want to make sure that we are holding the bow like this and we're not sort of doing anything crazy or anything like that. Another thing that may help, it may not help, it might just depend on the individual, is to use a shoulder rest, something like this. Now this is a Wolf Forte Primo shoulder rest. I don't know if that's coming out on camera, it's reflecting on the light. I will put a link to this underneath or I'll have a picture uh, coming up here so you can see what it is. But a shoulder rest can be quite useful. Um, I don't use a shoulder rest. I just, I, I just don't, I just haven't done. But if you have a shoulder rest on, what it can do is just help to just bridge the gap between your, uh, uh, b between your jaw or your chin and your shoulder here. So it means that I'm not having to sort of grip so much. So without a shoulder rest, my shoulder comes up a little bit, my chin gums comes down. That's fine, that's how I've been playing for years. It doesn't cause me any problems it's fine but if you do have any shoulder or, or anything like that issues you might find this better because I feel like you're not going to have to be gripping or anything the shoulder the violin I mean look at the difference between the chin rest up here and down there I mean that's a good I'd probably say it's about five inches something for probably about five inches there and it's about a five inch gap between my my jaw and my shoulder pretty much so if I just put the violin in here all I've got to do is sort of just place my chin obviously on the chin rest and help it out a little bit but I'm not having to do anything because the shoulder rest I don't know if you can see that I've got black on black why did I wear a black top today but you can see that the shoulder rest sits along the front of my shoulder here actually if I took this away it would be sitting it would be sitting there you know my violin would be on top but you can see where the shoulder rest would be placed there and then I'm not having to sort of I'm not having to move anything. So you might find that a shoulder rest is actually more useful to you to help so that you don't have to grip everything down. 
um, and also to just to alleviate any pressures or anything on your trapeze muscle um, you know it, it, whatever you you know whatever the issue is you might just help that if it doesn't help you and it hinders you then you know fair enough but try a shoulder rest so keeping your posture the way it should do is going to help as well. But, you know, my point of this is that if you have physical limitations, don't let it stop you. Just take things slowly. Um, you can use these little tips to kind of help you out a little bit. Um, and obviously, if you are experiencing, you know, any kind of pain, pain, you know, stop, consult your physician and, and go from there. But just make sure you are doing more bite size um, practice sessions, you know, five minutes at a time but five minutes break five minutes break five minutes break five minutes break five minutes so you're playing for a good sort of at least 20 to 30 minutes in your one broken down session but you're not just sort of <clears throat> excuse me doing five minutes and then nothing until the next day five minutes nothing <laughs> you know you're not you're you're, you're not actually going to get anywhere that way so thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and i will see you in part three bye